This is Mind Pump. All right, we brought Dr. Stephen Cabral back on the show. He's been on the show many times. He's a functional medicine practitioner, one of the best in the country. Like, he's phenomenal. In today's episode, he actually went through the results of a metals and mineral test that we all took, right? So we did a test where we can see if we have high or low levels of key minerals and whether or not we have levels of heavy metals, which can be very toxic. In fact, for our audience, he's offering all of you listeners right now a free test. Literally, you can get the test. All you do is pay for shipping. You get the test and you can find out what your mineral levels are and you can find out if you have any levels of heavy metals. The link for that is stephencabral.com forward slash H-T-M-A. Stephen is spelled S-T-E-P-H-E-N. It's an amazing test and you'll love this episode. We go all into it. Today's giveaway is MAPS Anabolic. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we post it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We also have a sale this month, like we do every month, uh, but there's a this one's pretty awesome. We have MAPS Performance, very popular program, 50% off. And then we have an Extreme Fitness Bundle that has multiple programs in it. It's already discounted. We took an additional 50% off, all right? So if you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Dr. Cabral, welcome back to the show. So good to be here. I appreciate you guys having me back, and it's always a lot of fun to get together. Yeah, oh, we yeah, love having you on, and these episodes where I you... always have a weird feeling about him coming, I... actually. <laughs> <laughs> I have mixed feelings. You're nervous. Have... You're, you're not alone there. Yeah, I have <laughs> mixed feelings about seeing you. Really <laughs> like you as a person, but don't always like the news you deliver to yeah. me. <laughs> no, these these episodes where you go through... Well, you, didn't, you did tests on us, and yes. then you reveal what our test results show have been so popular. Yeah, because we get to go over what's happening, and then we get to figure. I get to figure out how to make myself healthier and, and feel better. So yeah, it's the, amazing. The test we did this time was the heavy metals test. Yes. Explain that first, how we did it, what they're looking at, and then let's get into the whole thing. Yeah. So the minerals and metals test is going to look at. A lot of people always talk about what are my vitamin levels, which is great. You look at your folate, your methylcobalamin for your B12, your B6, all of those things are fantastic. But the body also uses minerals and it uses minerals actually more for energy. So if you're, let's say your calcium and your magne magnesium are off or your sodium and your potassium, those are your electrolytes, your main electrolytes. And so if those are imbalanced, people can end up with feelings of fatigue or headaches or muscle weakness or poor recovery, not just the carbohydrates you take in or the fats, it's actually the minerals that are helping to drive the body as well. So we're going to look at those four minerals, plus we're going to look at your copper and your zinc, which is great for the hair, the skin, the nails, also good for your immune system. We'll look at chromium for blood sugar, selenium, which is great for the thyroid. It's an anti-cancer base, probably one of the most pop or potent anti-cancer-based antioxidants, even though it's a mineral. And uh, then we're going to look at phosphorus. So phosphorus is typically normal, and it's normal for most of the, the guys I see in my practice, but it is sometimes off when people are going too low protein or there's it's too high sometimes when there's too much bone or muscle loss. So mm. I always like to evaluate that. And then we get into the heavy metals, which is your lead, which we hope no one ever has. That shouldn't be elevated at all. Then we have mercury, we have arsenic, we have cadmium, and then we have aluminum. And I want to talk about those specifically today because they don't go away on their own. And you can actually have them from childhood. And that's like one of the biggest things I want to bring that up wow. um, because there was a brand new study in The Lancet, actually on autism. And, I, and I'd love to be able to, to get a little bit more in depth on that. Not that everybody who has heavy metals is going to have autism. I'm not saying that, but we are now seeing instead of one in a thousand 20 plus years ago, we're now seeing one in 68 children with some level uh, of autism spectrum based disorder. And is there a wow. correlation wow. between high levels of certain heavy metals and autism? Is that what they're finding? hundred percent. Yeah. And this is wow. actually published now in PubMed uh, and specifically through the Lancet. And what they found is that it's mater maternal based exposure, which is the, the craziest thing. So it's the mom who's exposed that is then passing those metals through the placenta to the unborn child. Wow. The child is then born with heavy metals before they've even come into this world. Now, I first read about this, but it, it wasn't as corroborated because it was a small study. So it was called 10 Americans. I mentioned it before, but I think it's worth going over. So in the 10 Americans study, uh, this was actually with the Environmental Working Group, they tested 272, I believe, um, individuals to look for heavy metals. And they only tested 400 heavy metals or 400, let's just call it toxins from the environment is probably a better way to say it because there's not necessarily 400 heavy metals. And what they found on average is there was 232 toxins out of those 400 for each individual. But it turned out 
that these individuals weren't even born yet. And that's what started all of this research is that they found that in the fetal cord blood, there was 200 plus man-made toxins. And now they're taking toxins more seriously. If you talked about toxins even 15 years ago, you would have been laughed yeah. off of a podcast. Yeah, the yeah. word alone. It, it just It's like, oh, it's a conspiracy theory. It's not a conspiracy theory. We know these things are in nature. We know that just five years ago, there were 77,000 man-made chemicals when I wrote my book. Now there's over 120,000 in the United States. There was 8,000 in Europe uh, five years ago. Now there's over 10 or 11,000 in Europe. Well, Europe is that much different than like, us? Hugely. They different. have much different yes. regulations than we do. Bro, that yeah, but yeah. did you hear the number? That's like yeah, a have you massive ever seen, discrepancy. You ever seen the difference? Like they'll have like Fruit Loops in America versus Fruit yes. Loops in, in you know Europe or this product here versus that product. And you look at the ingredients. The ingredients are huge. Yeah. Very different. Very, very different wow, uh, because yeah. of the regulations, right? Yeah, because of the regulations. The worst thing is this though. The United States is now subbing out their farming to Mexico and other areas where they have even less regulations. Oh, oh and then God. they're importing it back with who even knows, you know, what's on a lot wow. of these foods. So yeah. these these to these toxins that the mother is passing on the fetus, she's this is these are things that she's exposed to while pregnant or before pregnant or both? Before pregnancy and while pregnant. Yes. Oh wow. Interesting. Yeah. And what are the you know, not to go too too what's far down common this, but yeah, yeah, where, yeah, where are they where are they being exposed to these? It. Is it through cosmetics? Is it through food? Yes. All of the above. Okay. The two largest ones are mercury and aluminum. So that's what they found. So not so much the lead. We, we hope that nobody's exposed to lead. Really, yeah. lead's been outlawed for a while, but there's still old homes and there's still a possibility of getting lead in certain things, but it's not in paints anymore. So we've got lead, we've got cadmium, we've got arsenic. Cadmium is absolutely detrimental to the central nervous system. Arsenic is um, detrimental to the thyroid and many other metabolic-based disorders. Those are commonly that come from the soil, come from food, but mercury and aluminum can come from other products as well. So the most common cause of mercury, and this is actually important because when we look at our labs, your body doesn't rid it on its own. So it can be from, and I don't want to get you know controversial here. I'm not saying that vaccinations are good or they're bad. All I'm saying is that many of them, especially you know if we're all 40 plus, definitely back in our day, there was mercury in those. Mm -hmm. um, now there's, there's usually heavy metal. The reason why there's an adjuvant or there's a metal in these things is because it actually excites the immune system. So in order for a vaccination or something to take hold, you do need some type of immune-based stimulant. Right. And mm -hmm. so that's why they're in there. Now they're using other things now. It's not the only thing. But what I'm saying is there was still mercury. And so we have mercury. We also have mercury mainly from fish. That's the most predominant way that you're going to be able to get high levels of mercury. So for mm. example, when I was in college, 18 to 22, every I had my dinner at like, let's just say six o'clock at night. Every night at 9 30, 10 o'clock or so, I'd microwave a bag of rice, minute rice. I'd put a can of tuna on top and just some cheap olive oil. You know, mm. this is just all I was trying to do was get to 200 pounds. And that was like my whole goal. Sure. That was my whole life, right? And so I did that and it was very cheap. I could have that whole meal for like less than $3. But when I then learned at about 20 years old how to do the same exact lab, minerals and metals says, I didn't learn how to do it. I went to a doctor. The doctor uh, did this lab on me. My mercury was off the chart. And he said, are you eating tuna? And I said, every night. <laughs> and he said, this is why. And I said, I thought tuna was healthy for you. He said, it's not that it's not healthy for you, is that it does also contain high levels of mercury. And I said, oh, okay, interesting. But then when I started to look at the research and they looked at Norway and other countries that don't have a lot of fish consumption, they were still, they could have elevated levels of mercury in their hair. And so they were finding that the predominance now of mercury is not just fish, but actually from the soil. So fruits, vegetables, grains, uh, what was the other one? Which is basically everything that we're talking about right now um, can have a contamination from the soil. Water is the biggest culprit besides fish because unless you're filtering water, there's almost always aluminum because they use aluminum to uh, basically aluminum will bind to other metals inside of the water and drop those to the bottom of the tank. Any additional aluminum that's left though is maintained in, or in the water. And there's no upper limit necessarily of aluminum that can be in the water. And so what happens is, sure, you might get not a lot of these other issues like lead in your water, but you could have aluminum. And mm -hmm. the last spot, and this is I think where many men and women are getting it, toothpaste, antiperspirant, 
and a lot of uh, bath uh, hygiene based products. Mm. Now, how has this increased so much in the environment? Is this due to pollution? Is this due, like, is this a natural result of like, I mean, is it normally found in the soil at this rate or is this like new? That's a good question. That's the, that's the exact question I had is because I said, how is this increasing? So we've run over a hundred thousand uh, minerals and metals tests, probably let's just say 250,000 or so of these labs. So we, we run, it's not our lab. We don't, we don't own any of these labs and I actually always want it that way because when the three or four of you so run your, biased. what's that? So you're not biased. Exactly. Yeah. I, I don't want to control the lab process. Smart. So when you run the labs, it goes to a third party. Now, all of the labs we use are CLIA certified, but they don't go to a health insurance agency. They don't go to your doctor. Everything is kept private, which is what I wanted as well. And so I don't actually know what your lab results are going to be until I receive those. And the lab isn't necessarily comparing those to two years ago, when, which is the last time we did yours. So I get a really unbiased look at this, but I also get an aggregate of data of a quarter of a million labs on this. And I've absolutely seen, and I've been looking at these labs now for over a decade, I absolutely see aluminum on the rise. And so I asked that same question, hmm. Justin, that you had. And, it, and the only thing that I can find is the worsening of the seas, like the ocean, not increase in hygiene products, I don't, I don't really think, but the soil contamination. Hmm. Do you, yeah. Now, do reverse osmosis uh, filters remove the aluminum out of your water? Yes, they do. Okay. Yeah. So that would be the way. Now, now, traditional filter would not? Well, when you look at the most popular filter in the world, like the Brita filter, yes. the, and I'm not disparaging this company in any way, I consider it like the curves right, of the fitness industry. <laughs> sure. yeah. It's a great place to start. <laughs> okay. right? Like, okay. yeah. But- it's not going to do a entry whole lot. Points. Right? Okay. It's a good okay. entry point. Yeah, Brita, entry Brita stock just went uh, way the fuck down. <laughs> yeah. So they found that it actually adds, it can add back aluminum uh, because now they may have changed this. So this was three years ago. Uh, it added additional aluminum because of the aluminum mesh filter. Oh. So it could take out chlor. Well, it could take uh, out some chlorine, other things, but you don't want aluminum filters filtering your water, which breaks down over so, time. So you want reverse osmosis, but then you probably want to add back uh, some elements exactly. in there. So too. that's what we do. We mm -hmm. do a countertop uh, reverse osmosis. If we end up staying in the home that we're in now, we're going to do a whole house filter mm -hmm. so that we also don't need to do a, because we have a shower filter, mm -hmm. we've got our water filter, and then we add back the minerals. And um, so in the future, I'll do a whole house filter that also helps to add back the minerals. So this thing with with this connection between some of these heavy metals and autism, could, could this be a potential uh, kind of avenue for, uh, where, where this is happening? The, the child is born already with elevated levels of some of these heavy metals already. Yes. Then they get vaccines on top of it. And in, in normal circumstances, these vaccines may not cause an overload of heavy metals, but because it's already elevated, then they throw the vaccines on top of it. Yes. Could this be a reason why some people are trying to make this connection? Yes, and I think the hard thing is, and I started learning about autism back around 2010. I worked with, um, I didn't work with, I studied under Dr. Natasha McBride. And she had something called the, um, uh, like, Gut Associated Psychology Program, something like that, GAPS. And so that was that kind of opened my eyes. Uh, again, this is going back you know, some time now. But even herself, who this is her life's work, could not tie it to one specific thing. Back then, she was mainly tying it not to metals, but the gut microbiome. Right. Because there's the same correlations with gut microbiome inflammation that there are with heavy metals. Right. So what I'm saying is I think that there is literally the rain barrel effect. I think there's a multifactorial um, problem going on here with autism that is not one thing, it's many things. There's a large amount of inflammation that inflames the immune system and the brain, which are connected essentially. And metals are one of those. They test hair from children without autism and children with autism. Again, this is right on PubMed. And they can clearly show elevated, elevated levels of heavy metal in autism. They're not saying that it's causatory, but that they are saying that it's correlated it's to that. Yes. Mm -hmm. In other words, it could be a re reverse causation or something like that. Maybe it could even be that if you have autism, you're not detoxifying right. as well and you're not getting rid of metals and maybe that's exacerbating it. But for sure, uh, they do believe that it's at least part of the cause. Okay. No, mm -hmm. I, I know, I don't want to turn this into a, a vaccine conversation, but you just said something that is, I'm curious. And I was wondering if it was just, it was a silly strategy we did or based off of what you're telling me right now, it sounds like it was a smart strategy is we, when when Max, my son, had his uh, vaccine shots, they typically want to just like kind of knock them all out in the in a, like the first like 60 to 90 days of, of getting them. We stretched them out over like three years. Mm -hmm. 
Is that a better, because of the exposure of potential like mercury and things like that that are in there, is that a better strategy or does that not matter because it's all getting into a system? So it's, it's a great question. I have to give my disclaimer now. I can't provide any medical advice, medical treatments, medical cures, medical diagnosis. So just my honest personal opinion is that a infant and toddler's immune system is not fully functional until two, until two years old. Okay. So if you start to introduce things that they would not typically be introduced to that quickly, maybe that that can be an issue for some children obviously not all right it's a reasonable it's a reasonable uh, potential i would say i right. think so and especially again and i know that many women can't breastfeed but if they're also not getting breastfed they're not getting the immunoglobulins that the mother passes through through breast milk to the child to help support the immune system that's not found in formula yeah. and so i think I, again i'm not saying that every um woman that does not breastfeed is going to have a child with autism that's yeah. not it at all yeah. um but the thing is, we don't have great testing right now. What we are using is something that we call the starter kit. It's the minerals and metals test that you ran, mm -hmm. but it's also the candida metabolic and vitamins test, which looks at gut-based issues like yeast overgrowth, mm -hmm. bacterial overgrowth. It looks at overall neurotransmitter function, so high dopamine. The, these issues, like you can see in a child, if they have high dopamine and they might have high norepinephrine, low serotonin, it can signal bacterial-based issues and gut-based issues. One of those bacteria is called Clostridia or Clostridium difficile. This is a mm. this is a huge That's a bad one. That component. kill I mean that's that's in, in nursing homes that can cause some big problems. That's right. It's mainly in hospitals mm. and nursing homes. However, there are many people walking around with it, but since they're not immunocompromised because they're not below two years old or especially below six months old or above 80 years old, it doesn't affect them to the same degree. Mm. So when we run those, and, and this is I know that you know we're not talking just to maybe um couples looking to start a family. But every couple looking to start a family should run those labs six months to a year before they're looking to conceive, if they can, of course. And then if they have heavy metals, eliminate them then. If mm -hmm. they have methylation issues, fix them then. If they have gut issues, right. fix them. Yeah. And then these things won't be passed on. Oh, interesting. Oh, wow. Wow. Now, why do they look at the why why look at the hair for minerals and heavy metals? Why not blood or some other test? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here has always been or urine, predominantly what's used to look at metals, because the body will Inside of the, the blood is meant to be clean. I mean, it really is. The blood is meant to be what we always refer to as homeostatic, or it should be at, at equilibrium. So let's say you're low in calcium in your blood. Your body will just break down some bone to be able to, to raise those calcium levels. So the body will move the metals into typically adipose tissue mm. um, or move it to the nervous system, the myelin sheath, or the brain which is basically all fat. Like all three of those, if we're really talking right. about it, are essentially fat. So that is a innocuous storage house for just to sweep it out of the blood. And what happens then is that, and we see this a lot. I, I, see, I work with um, fitness competitors. I work with uh, people that are looking to make massive body transformations, like 50 to 100 pounds. They can actually be living a very clean lifestyle and then they lose 50 pounds and we'll run this minerals and metals test and their the metals go through the roof, mm. but they didn't, they weren't exposed. Cause it's released from the fat. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. So when the UFC fighters, if you guys watch the UFC, like John Jones, mm -hmm. yeah. maybe he's used steroids, maybe he hasn't, I don't know. But they remember they said the whole thing with picograms. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. yeah. So picograms is like this nano amount, like of, um, let's just say testosterone that yeah. started to be released in the blood. It wasn't technically testosterone. It was a specific substrate that you would use to kind of cover up testosterone right. use. Okay, so this he could have taken them five years ago, ten years it was ago, in his fat. and it was in his fat. Oh, and wow. when UFC mm. fighters drop weight, they're dropping 20, 30 pounds excreting. in twelve weeks. Yeah, yeah. you know so, this. Wow. This happened. This is uh, I've read of cases. This happened with people with cannabis. They'll they'll quit yes. cannabis, then lose a bunch of weight years later, and they'll get elevated levels of and cannabinoids. Test positive. Yeah, because it was in <laughs> That's the, it was stored. Yeah, in, yeah, cause, yeah, cause cannabinoids get stored in the body. We all thought it was just an excuse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it's it's legitimate. Um, and it, it, so we call it in in medicine a Herxheimer reaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's when inside of your fat you can have all sorts of stored toxins. Okay. Well, now it overloads the liver, which is why like I've been talking about functional medicine detoxes for over a decade, only because I was introduced to them when I was studying and I started using them in my practice and I saw amazing results, but like it wasn't really accepted. But now we know the way that you reduce Herxheimer based reactions is you get the liver to function better. Yeah. And it's not like your liver's not working. It's just like, okay, well you just now it's, it's the same thing as going out and having a drink versus six drinks or 12 drinks. You're just literally making it more work for your liver. Well, when you lose all that weight or body fat or whatever it might be, your liver just has to work harder. So you essentially just 
It was introducing intermittent fasting, specific uh, clean eating, et cetera, and specific nutrients that your liver needs to help with what's called um, phase two uh, liver conjugation. So yeah. you basically take these fat-soluble toxins, right? So your fat's releasing these fat-soluble toxins. You need to convert it to a water-soluble toxin so you can get it out through your urine, your stool, or even your sweat. So let's say you're lean. Let's say you're somebody that's lean. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that your body has a lower capability to sweep these toxins out of your body? Or is it just that the concentration will be higher in the body fat that you do have? Yeah, I don't. that's a great question. I don't know that I exactly know the answer to that. My brain immediately went that it may store it more in your brain than, than the, the fat tissue. Wow. But oh, I can't wow. say that. I, I don't know Indeed. that specifically. But we also do know, again, it's the same with autism. We don't know that aluminum and mercury and other metals are causatory towards dementia and Alzheimer's. But for sure, we know that when we examine the brain of someone with Alzheimer's, there's higher levels of aluminum. Okay. And so what I would say is it's probably causatory because it's mm. inflammatory. It's an oxidative stress on the body. And oxidative stress creates inflammation, which creates cell mm. damage. Um, and then you just kind of go down the line. From so there. the reason why you cut hair is because it's it, it, your, your hair will show what you've been consuming or it gets deposited in there as well. Yeah. All your hair is is essentially a protein that then when your body excretes, gets trapped inside of that hair. And so NASA, FBI, they've all been using this for 40 plus years. They yeah. were actually using it before as a lab test. They were they were doing these results. And now, uh, well, I mean, World Health Organizations, all these organizations are using it because it's an easy way to test pregnant women to look at metals and other things like mm -hmm. that. But it's also easy for drug testing. So all they need to do is snip the hair instead of the blood because you can basically you can get things out of your system it. faster. That's but right. it's in your hair if it was if you had it six months ago. Yes, that's the famous hair. story I like to tell about Britney Spears. That's why remember? she shaved her head. She shaved her head mm -hmm. because she was about to have a drug test. Oh, for, I didn't for, know that. Is that yeah. true? That's I, that's that's what I've heard. Again, I don't. Okay. I'm not in the whole well, scene, but that's what I it heard. It would make oh, sense. I remember when drugs. she did that. It would make sense because long hair would mean the ends would have stuff that you took, you know, six months ago, and the oh, hair yeah. closest to your scalp is what you did maybe a week ago. So shave exactly. it off. Did she have like a court appearance right before that or something? There was custody things again yeah. like yeah, I remember that's when she would her and, and what's yeah, the Kevin Federline or what about that we're that's divorcing. what it was yeah and, and Adam also, knows a lot about Britney Spears I, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I was a super, <laughs> was, you're I was my a wheelhouse. super fan yeah. when I was a kid that's hella funny <laughs> that's, that's so interesting I was like why'd oh, you I didn't do know that, that. Yeah. Well, what, she's yeah. trying to bust the or beat the test what are the symptoms of of higher heavy metals um what are some things that people may be noticing so that they can come and you know maybe go run one of these tests so Average individuals in our practice, they're overall like fairly healthy people, but yeah, they might have some autoimmune issues. They might have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, blood sugar issues, trouble losing weight, fatigue. A lot of the issues that they may see are headaches throughout the day or just randomly, right? Mm -hmm. They've got headaches. Some of it's um, poor circulation, so cold hands, cold feet, okay. but also pins and needles in the hands uh, and the feet. All nervous system so stuff. A lot of nervous system, exactly. They might get some brain fog. That can be attributed to so many things though. I can't say it's just heavy metals, but another big one is nausea and abdominal base pain, like intestinal pain as well. Wow. Because heavy metals can be in the gut. And one of the reasons is obviously we're consuming them through food and they get, uh, so we talked about actually adipose, uh, so fat stores, but also in the biofilms of your gut. Oh. So you have mm. your, microvilli or your villi, the, the call a brush border. So basically like the finger-like structure inside of your intestines. And so right around that, if you do have parasites or you do have bacteria or you do have yeast, what happens is a biofilm begins to be created. And that biofilm is a protein-like matrix. It's a gel-like matrix that you can actually pass because uh, you can break it up what's called biofilm disruptors. But inside of that are also heavy metals. Heavy metals add structure to that biofilm oh. that can then protect what's below. Because again, your micro, so your microbiome is its own living ecosystem. It's literally like us living on the planet. There are trillions of bacteria inside of your gut. There's about three to five pounds of bacteria just in our gut microbiome. Wow. Mm. And so these biofilms basically are created by these bacteria, parasites, whatever, to protect themselves yeah. so they can right. survive in your gut. It's the same thing as us building a house. From yeah. like the elements. From the, the elements. Same exact thing. And this yeah. is why sometimes people will do treatments uh, to try and kill bad bacteria and it just won't touch it. And, it's, and it's parasites behind, especially. Yeah, because yes. it's behind the biofilms. Exactly. Well, that sucks. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> let's yeah. talk about these tests. Let's, let's see, yes. you know, what our results are and maybe we can tie symptoms to them or whatever because uh, I'm very interested to see. 
Well, this yeah, is what you found. now. If I remember, now this the last was, time you tested, this us, was, I would say this is one of the first tests that we ever did with you, right? I believe it was the very first. It was two years ago, almost to the date. It was two years. And ago. and you found something, and was it lead that you saw no, in no, us no, before? Not lead. Mercury. It was, uh, oh. Mercury. Mercury. Mercury and yeah. aluminum. That's aluminum, the which so, was weird. We were that's like, the what? biggest thing we're going to chat about today. Um, and but overall, so when, when we look at this. It's actually very interesting. So I wanted to kind of preface it with this. So again, we're going over the minerals and metals. Uh, it's your calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium. It's manganese, selenium. It is chromium, phosphorus. And then we look at the metals. Okay. Um, so we'll go over those. But what I always like to tell people is that your body, so you have your, you have your um, basically your genotype and your phenotype. Your genotype are your genes. That's your genetics. We know that that accounts for anywhere between 5% and 20%. So um, researchers debate, is it only 5% that's your genetics matter or is it uh, 20%? Well, I know we're going to talk about that more when we when we talk about an additional lab in the future. Um, but what I want to say is this, the body essentially will move to its own, like if you add water, right, in into some type of vessel, it's going to find level. It's going to find its own equilibrium. Sure. Everybody's body kind of does that. So when I go over your labs, some things have changed, some things have stayed the same, but I want you to. I want to ask you, and you can kind of answer it or not answer. It. It's up to you. Have you done anything different over the last two years? Have you done things that would move these markers, not move these markers, added more stress, less stress? And that's the way to look at the minerals and metals test. Got it. Because you can specifically move it, but they're not going to move on their own. And you're going to see them be similar in the way that your body maintains its own level of homeostasis. Got it. Hmm. Okay. Perfect. All right. All right. Let's see what happens. So these are at random. Like there's no, there's, so there's actually no winner, loser there's no yet. winners and losers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's <laughs> oh, a winner here, right? Yeah. Everybody's a winner. Participation. Yeah. participation <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, know. <laughs> we, we know who won and lost at the end. We'll, we'll... At the end, yes, you can you can talk about that. All right. So Adam, we're gonna go over yours first because it was just the first one that popped up. Okay. So your 2022 results were uh, pretty good electrolytes, slightly higher calcium than magnesium. And with this, I just want to preface this for electrolytes. It doesn't mean that you're taking too much calcium or taking too much magnesium or not enough. Calcium and sodium are essentially a proxy for the fight or flight um, or the sympathetic nervous system. So the more stressed an individual is, the higher their calcium will be. When you're in a state of fight or flight, you produce norepinephrine and you produce cortisol. Uh, norepinephrine is an excitatory neurotransmitter. It gets you fired up, gets the heart rate going, blood pressure going. Cortisol is a glucocorticoid. It will help break down stored glucose. Well, during that same process, though, your body will pull mm -hmm. calcium into the bloodstream to make it more calcium uh, retentive. Is this to buffer the the whole thing or is this, does that have to do with it? Part of the stress process. It, it will actually help increase blood pressure and, and much more. But the problem is, and this is why it's so important when we look, cardiovascular disease is still the number one color, killer in the United States. Mm -hmm. You can have normal cholesterol, high levels of calcium, oh, and calcium yeah. hardens the arteries. That's right. So it's like, it's-, it's I remember because in the, in the 80s and 90s, they were hammering people to take more calcium to strengthen their bones. And they're yes. like, oops- we forgot magnesium. Yeah, because right. right. magnesium then pulls calcium out of the bloodstream right. once it's done and, and back to where it belongs, okay. uh, whether it's the tissue or the bones. So your your um, all that to say is that you don't need to start pumping one or the other, except you can actually move the needle with magnesium. Yeah. Magnesium slows the sympathetic nervous system and moves you more towards the parasympathetic yeah. nervous system. Okay. So 2022, your electrolytes um, were pretty good, just you needed a little bit more magnesium. Uh, this time around, your... Levels of magnesium are a little bit elevated, which we don't see often, but it means that whatever dosage or whatever you're doing is is on the good side. Mm -hmm. However, there's still that elevated calcium. So when I talked with people, I use what's called the de-stress protocol. So it's diet, exercise, stress reduction, tox removal, rest, emotional balance, supplements, scientifically backed supplements, and a success mindset. So the mindset is so you don't relapse, right? You don't go back. But it's, so supplements is one part. So when we look at this overall, it's not just about taking nutritional supplements, although yes, magnesium helps. Helps. It's about reducing stress. Mm. That's a big part of what we yeah. talk about here. Okay, let's let's move on though. Uh, ask me any questions you may have though, yeah. but I know that we've been through yeah. this one, and so I don't yeah, want to yeah. you know yeah, yeah. belabor any points. Yeah. Your 2022 uh, results for your other minerals is that you had low copper. Your manganese was great. Your zinc was great. Chromium was a little low. Selenium was decent. And phosphorus was perfect. All right, let's check out this time around. Your copper is now back up to optimal. Your zinc is optimal, which is great. Your manganese is good. Chromium still a little low. Selenium is now perfect. 
And the so I want to stop there actually, and then I want to talk about phosphorus. Anything different you've done over the last two years? I know it's two years, so it's a long time. But did you start to use a, like a daily activated multi or anything that would bring up your copper levels and your selenium? Because it usually doesn't happen on its own. Yeah, I, I've been better this, this since the last time we talked with taking a multivitamin. I'm still not as consistent as I'd like to be, but yeah. I've made way more of a conscious effort of doing that. Where in the past, when we first met, I wasn't doing that at all. Mm -hmm. So I've done that. That's different. What are some other things that would Were you doing the GHKCU uh, peptide before you took this test? No. Okay. Yeah, no. just wondering. Yeah, yeah, no, that's all. That's all new. So I just recently started taking that. Um, what else would potentially affect that? That I could be p potentially doing. I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, even beyond nutritional supplements, if you started to use um, more superfood powders, like greens based powders, uh, fruits and vegetable based powders, or you had a more well rounded, nutrient dense diet, that mm -hmm. that as well can help. Or eating pennies. It's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm probably better right now about doing my, my green juice, my multivitamin. Those are things that I probably wasn't doing nearly as much as I was before. Again, I still think that I can be more consistent with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, those are things that I'm doing better today than I was doing two years ago. But I can't think of anything else specifically that I would have uh, changed. Not Definitely not supplement wise. And then I'm trying to think like in my diet, my diet's pretty similar, you know. Yeah. And I would, I would say that, so my only recommendation is just make sure the multi that you're taking right now has at least 200 micrograms of chromium. Yeah. Cause that's yours the one does, that's right? Does yours? Yes. Okay. That's what I got. So, okay. Good yeah. Time. Okay. All right. Perfect. And then phosphorus is a little elevated, which I almost never see, you know, in guys, especially, you know, um, who eat well, all of those things. So it can be tissue breakdown, bone breakdown, or high phosphorus intake. Phosphorus intake, yes, it can be from meats and things like that, but I don't typically see it with that. Um, it can be from phosphorus in uh, certain beverages, like phosphoric acid can raise it. The other thing that it could be, and I don't know if um, if that would Celsius be- Celsius has it. A, I wonder if there is uh, phosphoric acid in Celsius. I don't, I don't actually know. Look it up, Doug, while we're talking. We can look that up. Yeah, and then the other one I wanted to ask you is, um, are you taking an electrolyte supplement that might have phosphorus? Because some do. Yeah, L uh, LMNT, don't they have it? Is no, it that's uh, that's, mag that's magnesium, sodium, and potassium. Oh, that's all that's in there. Yeah, then okay. no, that's the only that's the only one that I'm taking right now. And it was only yours that was elevated out of all four. So if now you, you said the breakdown of tissue and, and bone potentially could cause it too. So yes. one of the things that I'm guilty of, and I definitely would say that I'm I'm there now than I was two years ago, more so, is um, I'm being a big guy to keep the muscle mass and everything that I have, I have to eat a lot of protein and be training consistently. My volume of training and my consistency of hitting my protein intake is definitely lower than what it was before. So mm -hmm. I know I've, I lose muscle. I always do. Like that's yeah. like my go-to. If I have had like a really hard workout or a couple hard workouts and that would show some elevated from the tissue breakdown. Like in other yeah. words, inconsistency would cause more breakdown. It's good that you brought that, brought that up because that's actually the difference between a minerals and metals test and every other lab in the world is that it looks at, so every uh, month your hair grows about a quarter of an inch, the average individual. So if you give a quarter of an inch hair sample from, you know, close to the root, it's 30 days, uh, a half an inch, 60 days, or three fourths of an inch. We typically just ask for a half an inch or three quarters of an inch, which, you know, some people with longer hair give, okay, now you're looking at three months. Got it. So this is a pretty weighted sample of, for you, your hair is short, probably 30 days to 60 days. Mm. So over that period of time, you could have had muscle loss or other loss there, mm. or really hard workouts. And that's the other thing. And then you can have tissue breakdown, you know, just from a normal hard workout. Hmm. It would have to be, it would have to be more. Now you're not that far out of range, but this is why we do this. And you want to do these on an annual basis because your body's not static. So you actually want to see, Hey, what's going yeah. on? What did I do? Yeah. Um, and this was about two months ago or so you took this lab. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not even. So okay. something to think about, and I'm happy to go back and forth because sometimes it just kind of jogs your memory and then you think about it tomorrow. You yeah, know? Yeah. And so yeah, yeah. Well, we can chat about that. And then, uh, and then we'll check on the the phosphoric acid in. Um, did you look, Doug? I did. I don't see it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's so in it's in like sodas like Coca Cola things like that. Th those have. Phosphoric well, I'm a big acid. Diet Coke drinker. Are you really? Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's one of my. Could be. Yeah, that's one of my. <laughs> one of my bad <laughs> habits. You might is have that found it. How bad Sevilla. is that for him, uh, Doctor Corral? <laughs> it is uh, not ideal. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> moving along. All right. Moving, moving along. Moving right along. So only when he smokes cigarettes. Yeah. I only drink Coke when I, <laughs> when I smoke cigarettes. Okay. Um, so last year, we you had elevated mercury and aluminum. This year, the mercury is still elevated 
at about the same level what? and the aluminum has gone down a little bit. So two years. So what I would ask, I would ask you is this, did you run a heavy metal detox, like a full heavy metal detox? Um, yeah, I would just, I would start there. No, we okay. didn't. The only thing we did is because we all had that, right? So we yes. thought it had something to do with being locked up in here. We, Doug ran out and bought the the, the doctor uh, filter or whatever. Yes. I have one in my bedroom now too that I- We thought maybe I, these lights, uh, because they, they could be putting off some mercury. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so. it was interesting that we all had that. Um, That's the reason why we did it because remember all of us had the mercury. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, now and I know I eat a lot of sushi too though. So I know that there's potential that I could be picking up there. Um, but those are the only things that uh, we've done differently is the filters. There was nothing, we didn't do a big detox. Okay. Yeah. So this variant, some people actually, so out of the four of you, some of yours went down some didn't. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it's not one specific thing. What I'd like to do, if, if you guys are all open to it, I'm going to send you four heavy metal detoxes. Okay. Then what I'd like to do Ooh, yeah. is then retest you okay. about eight weeks or Perfect. six to eight weeks afterwards Perfect. and just say, okay, is this an everyday exposure or was this just simply built up? Because as I said before, right, it could be we still there. Yeah, you could yeah. have had it 10, 15 Storm years ago. Okay. And it's just your body's not eliminating it. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. That yeah. sucks. So it's not like it's not this not uncommon until you do something that legitimately um helps to empty that rain barrel. It doesn't happen. The other big thing is we can talk about this, you know, towards the end, like what's the best thing to get rid of these metals? But infrared sauna is also phenomenal. Mm. Yeah. It works better than regular sauna for metals. Now, yeah. regular sauna is fantastic um, and may even have other benefits, but infrared sauna, although it doesn't get as hot, does seem to push those metals out to does, a greater degree. Does a steam room do something similar to the sauna because of the sweating or does that not? It does. Okay. Anytime you're sweating, you're going to help with that elimination. Got it. It's the infrared sauna is essentially cooking you from the inside out yeah. rather than from the outside in. Got it. Yeah, yeah. so it's a Got little it. bit different. All right, any... Um, so any questions on nope, that? No, no, you answer right. a lot there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Let's see who's not up next. Doug's up next. Yeah. All right. Dougie. So we've got the 2022 and the 2024. All right. So in 2022, we had uh, very elevated levels of calcium, magnesium, and then very level, very low levels of sodium, potassium. If anybody ever sees this on their lab tests, this is fairly common. Uh, we call this more like the um, coming off of the alarm stage of stress. Mm. So the body's no longer keeping up with stress the same way that it did a year ago, 10 years ago, whatever it might be. If you ever see all four high, that's the alarm stage of stress. The body's maintaining itself very well, but it's at peak levels of stress. So, so this is like post-stressed. This is post-stress or usually body's not able to handle the stress as it once was. Got it. Just, and that's what happens. Okay. So we see a slight lowering of calcium magnesium. We see an improvement in sodium potassium. So I would still say we need to work on overall stress-based levels and improving deep and REM sleep overnight. Mm. So if you're not tracking deep and REM. I am. Okay, you are. I am. I actually have an aura deep ring. Deep. Yes. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of nights I'm not hitting my targets with. What do you deep. What do you keep for your uh, deep and REM targets right now? Oh boy, I have to take a look at my app. I thought they were picked by the app itself, so well, I didn't actually. Uh, I it will actually... be so. That's the thing. The Aura Ring and the Whoop, especially the Aura, which I love. I think it's a, a great product. Um, that they base it off of you, so you get scores based on you, so not it's general population. Wow. Yeah, wow. and so. Um, now, again, if you do worse than your typical, hmm. then it will, will give you worse score. So it's good in that way, but you want to shoot for 75 to 90 minutes of deep sleep per night, which is typically the first four hours or so you get more of that. And then for REM sleep, so deep sleep is mainly for the body and REM sleep is mainly for the mind and the brain. 75 to 90 minutes, is that what you said? Of deep and then 120 minutes, so two hours plus of REM sleep. Hmm. So like uh, last night I got an hour and 46 of REM. Okay. So that was not bad, but nope. 46 okay. minutes of deep. Yes. So it's very frequent that my deep sleep is not as high as I would like it. Mm -hmm. um, we see that much more common in deep sleep than REM. A lot of people are able to get close to that two hours or more, two to two and a half hours, but not able to hit the deep sleep. And the reason is their body does not move out of fight or flight and into the parasympathetic nervous system fast enough when their head hits the pillow. Mm. So their heart rate and their body temperature don't drop within the first hour to two hours. They'll see in their aura ring or whoop strap, uh, it won't drop until five, six hours into the night. They get their lowest body 
temperature. Yeah, reading some some nights it's that way for sure. It's probably because of those uh, Korean soap operas that he watches. Yeah, they're <laughs> so, so, so excited. <laughs> I get sucked in. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I like that we're bringing a little bit of levity to uh, the intensity of the conversation. Yes. Yeah. So definitely, these are two areas I know I need to work on. Mm -hmm. I've been very, uh, you know, serious about tracking this yes. and working on sleeping better, like hitting my target you know, at least eight hours in bed and hopefully sleeping most of that time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I know my night routine doesn't start early enough. For so example, I, I'm busy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm busy up until bed, bedtime. Yeah. And uh, I know my heart rate may be elevated at that point and doesn't go down for quite a while afterwards. Yes. So the, the three, two, one sleep system is the best system I've heard on this. Three hours before bed, stop eating. Two hours before bed, stop drinking. One hour before bed, no more screens, no more blue light. Now it's better the earlier you can do this. Sure. I mean, if you can stop being off for your screen two hours ahead of time or three hours, even better. But this enables you to basically downshift. So use more amber lights or wear blue light blocking glasses, um, get rid of the screens, anything that's just continuing to push the sympathetic nervous system. Because if you think about it, if you check your phone upon waking and you're already kind of jumping into it to start the day, let's say you wake up at seven o'clock, you don't go to bed till 10, you're, you're in that sympathetic nervous system for like 15 hours a day instead of like 12 hours, mm -hmm. let's say seven to seven, right? It makes it, it makes a huge difference, especially yeah. as you get older. You just don't have the same buffers in the body. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Now let's look at uh, your 2022 previous minerals. We had elevated copper. I remember that. That was actually, you were the only one with the elevated copper. And we see that, yes, there is copper exposure in the environment. There's no doubt about that. But oftentimes we see it as a lack of zinc. Okay. So every mineral has its antagonist. And if you're not taking enough, enough zinc, because maybe your immune system used up a greater supply, uh, building muscle, et cetera. So I'm not sure um, specifically what you did, but you improved your copper by about 50%. We still need a little ways to go. So what we would actually do is we would not use a product called Balanced Zinc, uh, which has... 15 to one, so 15 milligrams of zinc, one milligram of uh, copper, you would actually use a straight zinc-based supplement. And it would have 25 milligrams, and then you could just use a normal multi. And that will push down your copper while raising your zinc. Th this is actually pretty important because copper can lead to, like cosmetically, thinning of the skin, skin rashes, grain of the hair, uh, et cetera. But it can also lead to brain fog, uh, learning disorders, typically more in children, uh, allergies. You mean too much does that or too little does this? Too much copper. Oh, wow. Yeah. So a cop they call it kind of copper toxicity. It's not the same type of toxicity, but um, as like the mercury and aluminum, mm -hmm. but it absolutely does matter, especially okay. in kids. Yeah. Okay. So we'd want to push that down. Now you'd say, well, how come you can't just do this with foods? You can, but a lot of high zinc foods are also high in copper. Mm, um, they're, they're naturally balanced. balanced. Yeah. Like oysters. oysters like it's a great yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, any kind of mollusks uh, have that. Interesting. All the rest were good. Chromium, actually, I wanted to ask you, Doug, your chromium was really good. Typically, we never see it on the higher side. So are you taking a blood sugar-related uh, multi-mineral or anything that would be higher in chromium hmm, specifically? That's a good question. I, I can't say I have been. Nuts and seeds, are you eating like more of those? Than you Not really. Eat? No. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I'll, hmm. We'll look into that a little bit more Blood. because um, that's not one we, we usually, it's not a bad thing, but we usually don't see it as much. <laughs> yeah, no, it's interesting. I have no idea. All the rest were good. We still have the elevated mercury and aluminum uh, essentially on par with what it was last time, Damn. maybe a little bit less. So that's why I, I really want to look into this. I want to, you know, specifically. No, for a while after the last time I did some uh, chlorella mm -hmm. uh, tablets. So I don't know if that. How long did you use those for? Probably like two or three months. Okay. And do you know at what dosage? Usually it's two to three grams you would want to use. I mean, I was taking a big handful of them. Yes. They're tiny. Yep. So. so we like Crexel chlorella. Uh, we usually use Synergis. So I'll t I can tell you exactly what we use. Um, in the heavy metal detox, there's Crexel chlorella. There's um, kelp. There is um, spirulina. What else is in there? There's bladder rack. Uh, and then there's the biofilm disruptors and the biofilm disruptors are going to have the enzymes to help break down the biofilm, which can contain that. And the last part is a, a binder to make sure they actually leave the body. So once they get moved from your liver to the intestines, typically through the bile, then you want to bind them up, remove them from the body. Do you take uh, like, would you take chlorella with food or would that potentially prevent the absorption of other minerals? Yeah, that's a great question as well. Um, I'd have to, do more research on that. We always take it away from food though. Okay. Yeah. We take those away. That makes sense. 
Yeah. Okay. That and the biofilm disruptors as well. Okay. They want to interact with each other, but they help the gut to a far greater degree. Got it. Plus you want the correct cell chlorella to not compete with anything as it's being absorbed through the gut That's wall. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. So we're, I'm going to send you out those kits just because I know that you haven't done specific heavy metal detoxes with that. And then just doing sauna as many times a week as you can. Uh, those are two great things. That'd be cool to combine those and then test again see how <clears> well we all do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd love to do. see that. Because yeah. if not, there's a, there's a, not daily, but there's a weekly exposure that is going on because yeah. this isn't typical. We we do see in our practice elevated levels of aluminum, but not typically this high. And we often see them go down once people begin protocols, but we never, we don't usually see mercury as elevated. Mm. Now, could that just be from sushi? Yes, it can. Like there's no doubt about that. Tuna, swordfish, uh, any larger fish, king mackerel, all yeah. of those will-, will that isn't The so reason why it doesn't seem like that is because Justin doesn't eat that at all, really. And the fact that if he's the same, if he's, when you do his test, if he's yeah, up he's, there with he's us- He's chicken fish, nuggets. He's fish yeah. sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pull up Justin's right now. Let's see. Let's hey. see about that. That'll be a good- Thanks um, a lot, you guys. <laughs> all right. So did, did, I thought selenium, doesn't selenium help balance out mercury or is that just the kind of fish that you choose? Selenium helps with liver detoxification, which may then, as part of the process, help with eliminating it from the body. But I don't know selenium specifically. It may. I just don't okay. know that it specifically eliminates. Okay. All right. So in, in 2022, uh, you had overall very good levels of, of electrolytes. They, they were very balanced. So they were Ooh. great. So very even, very Stay level. Stay salty. Very nice. electrical. Like very electrical. Your copper was slightly low. Uh, your zinc was perfect. Manganese was perfect. Chromium a little low. Selenium a little low. Uh, phosphorus was perfect. So let's go take a look now at 2024. So um, overall, great. Again, with the electrolytes, little elevated with the sodium and potassium, which can sometimes just um, show tissue breakdown. Hard workouts. So if you think about it, um, potassium is typically intracellular. It's inside the cells and potassium is typically extracellular. So when you when you see these a little bit both elevated, you're often thinking about cell breakdown, mm -hmm. tissue breakdown, and then the potassium is now being excreted to a greater degree because okay. it shouldn't be in okay. that body. All right, all of your minerals came back into balance. So again, I don't know in the last two years what you've done uh, to be able to improve that. The only thing that we need to still work mm -hmm. on is copper. Okay. So unlike... Uh, Doug, you would actually use a product called Balanced Zinc, which then contains the copper to help bring that up a little bit. It's only one milligram. You add that to something like the Daily Activated Multi or Daily Nutritional Support or your favorite product, you're now getting two grams a day and that should be enough copper to help bring you back up. Okay. I mean, I have like been really uh, addressing the nutrient, you know, in my diet and um, trying to kind of uh, deal with other gut issues and things. So mm -hmm. I have been taking my multivitamin a little bit more consistently. So, I mean, all that kind of stuff I've been sort of a little bit more disciplined with, but other than that, you know, everything's been pretty much the same. If someone like him that's lower on copper used like a, like a GCK or GCK. GHKCU. It's a peptide. Yeah, copper, for, yeah. for, would well, that increase it? Or I, I don't know. I'd have to, again, I want to look into that specifically as well, right. but um, just with all the gut based work you've been doing, this is sometimes it's just you're eating the same great diet. You're taking just base level nutritional supplements, but since your gut is healthier, you're absorbing more. Yeah. So that's what I okay. found myself. My, my gut was a mess for like four or five years from like 17 years old to like my early twenties. And there was no protocols like in the nineties and like early mm -hmm. 2000, like to, to do this. So it was just kind of figuring it out along the way. But after that, my nutrient intake was dramatically different. Like okay. it was like, and yeah, I wasn't sense. doing it a lot different. I was just actually absorbing it. My entire, you know, digestive tract, which is like 25, 26 feet, wasn't inflamed. Yeah. So that I, I want to, yeah, I don't want to overlook the importance of gut health. If you were to see, we see in our practice, low minerals across the board. Hmm. We're either thinking, okay, this person's eating a lot of processed food or like, you know, poor nutritional diet. They're overtaxing their body in terms of stress and exercise. So they're just depleting themselves more. Um, or, Really like poor digestion, poor gut breakdown. Yeah. It's going to be any one of those three. I want to ask something you just mm. said right there that I think is interesting. So you, you, if they have a lot of low vitamins and minerals, one of the things you guys assume a lot of times is that they have a highly processed diet. Mm -hmm. Isn't most processed foods fortified with all these vitamins and minerals? Uh, they, yeah. they tell you that it is, but it's fortified with only a couple. And those are typically folic acid, um, sometimes cyanocobalamin, which we can talk about these, uh, you know, not natural forms of yeah. B9 and B12, folate and, and uh, B12, um, iodine, and just a couple other nutrients. So these are the ones like vitamin D2 is well, like, so they're like pixie dusting stuff that doesn't even really help us. That just much, enough really. to bring you back up to baseline RDA. 
like the you know, the recommended just what they're daily required allowance. To do, basically. That's hmm. right. Yeah. And that so it's only on a couple. Like they're not giving you chromium. Yeah. They're not giving you selenium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They're adding iodine to see, to to table salt. Yeah. But they don't tell you for table salt is there's aluminum in there. So people that are there's another uh, cause of high aluminum. Just regular salt. If you go to a restaurant, they're not using sea salt for the most oh, part. Right. They're using table salt. That sucks. Yeah. Huh. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So it's just the cheapest things that we use in this country leads to far poorer health. Mm. And say you grew up on a farm and you're eating like all fresh foods all the time, probably don't need like, and you're not, you know, you're just doing your normal exercise. You're not overexerting. You're getting good sleep. You don't need to fortify as much because you're getting all this raw, great nutrition. You know, it's like, it's just very, very different. Um, But besides that, um, like I said, improve the chromium a little bit, improve the copper a little bit. All of those look good. Okay. We'll take a look at your heavy metals. So this may actually lead into the sushi debate, because all we can say is that we have the data. So Justin's hmm. mercury is almost exactly where it should be, almost perfect. Oh, see, that's interesting. But aluminum is elevated. Now, aluminum is pervasive. We typically see that. But um, yeah, so your mercury is much better. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Let me see if it's down from, um, do you, from 2022. Do you sushi that often? Uh, no. I don't do sushi. Or, well, you much. do fish, though. I do, do, do yeah. some fish. You got shit. You've eaten salmon twice have, in the last week. But I have gut uh, gut issues on and off all the time, which could cause some of the stuff. That's why I'm interested. Yeah, in. but I'm trying to nail down something that me, you, and Doug the do more here, common that yeah. he doesn't do. So one thing about salmon, <clears throat> even though it's a larger fish, it doesn't eat other fish, and so its mercury no. levels aren't high. Right, right. Uh, okay. And uh, that's so like one of the only outliers. Yeah, so okay. Usually the small fish, sardines, tuna. mackerel, mm. anchovies, yeah. you know, those are the best ones to go for if mm-hmm. you can. Sardines yeah. are okay. Yeah, sardines, I eat a lot, yeah, I eat right. a lot of fish. Yeah. Sardines with the skin and the bones, which people think like, how would you possibly eat that? These are tiny fish, small little bones. It's one of the most nutritious things you could add to your diet. Yep, yep. You're getting literal calcium from the bones. The skin has the most amount of omega-3s. It's- one of the best things that you can yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just glad you guys aren't uh, testing my omega threes. So. Oh yeah. yeah right. I'm so sure low. those are low. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sal is up next. Let's pull up the 2022. This guy's a mess. Yeah. And Sal, I don't even know that we went over your 2022 because so I don't know that it was in at the time we went over it. I can't remember. I'm I think we to did. Back. No, okay. we did. We did. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's go over your 2022. Your electrolytes for calcium magnesium were actually very good. Your sodium potassium was a little bit low. And that just goes back to, so here's the interesting thing. That was the very first time mm-hmm. that you ran a minerals and metals test. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you what you were five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. It's also why I highly recommend at-home lab testing yeah. because then you have data on yourself, yeah. Right? Yeah. especially like for hormones and all of these things. Especially if you start to feel different. You well, and especially since you already mentioned the genetic component, there's 20 per, 20% of it could be your genetics that you're going to have certain levels that are different than what mm-hmm. everybody else is. Mm-hmm. So yep. using only one test is not enough. hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So let's take a look at those um, 2024 results. They're actually all perfect now. Mm. So you got, um, wow. you aced the exam on the yeah. electrolytes. Ooh, for wow. sure. Those look really good. Wait till we get to the minerals. The, wait, 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 wait till we get to the minerals. All right, let, we'll get to those right now. Because I have gut issues, so I'm sure that's a problem. So for 2022, copper was low, manganese was low, zinc was good, chromium was low, selenium was low to moderate. Not bad, actually. Not bad. And phosphorus was good. Okay, so let's go to 2024. And copper improved slightly. Manganese, a little low still. Zinc, still good. Chromium, very low. Selenium, excellent. Phosphorus, good. Okay, so yeah. improvements. So it's, yeah, they definitely improved. Is yeah. chromium picolinate a good version of chromium? Yes, it is. Okay, yeah, I remember exactly. that being like the supplement. I remember that in the 90s? Yeah, I totally For fat that. loss. Well, yeah, whatever. it's like I would go to GNC and pick up my chromium and there was like one other thing and I'm like, oh, this is going to help me build muscle. Yeah, and yeah. And I was very confused. <laughs> <laughs> very confused. All right, let's go over your mercury. So in 2022, what were your levels of mercury? They were... Uh, out of range. So 0.026. Again, we're, we're measuring. That's why the hair is one of the best things to do this. It's very sensitive for how much mercury is. Is that mean low or high? Um, elevated. Okay. Right, yeah. Right. Now it's just on the range of elevated and then out of range. So, so better. It's better. Wow. Yes. Yep. Slightly See? better. And actually your aluminum was the best out of everybody's. It was elevated, but not super high. It was not super high. And it still maintained that exactly the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I use the, uh, the st- I use a steam room 
probably three days a week at least. Mm-hmm. So that might be, I don't know, that helped with the... Without a doubt. Okay. Yeah, it definitely helps. So, so if somebody got first place of all the tests, it would be me is what you're saying. <laughs> I can't say that. I have to, <laughs> if I have to we stand were to pick somebody. Here. Uh, I have to stand uh, I'm not Mercury. But overall, okay. great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I would say the number one thing we're looking at is we're just, we're literally just fine tuning your nutrition, yeah. your supplementation, your overall stress, your overall sleep. That, that we're going to do for all of us for the rest of our life. We're yeah. always just trying to improve that. But metals is something that verifiably is not saying like, well, you know, this, we can improve this, we can improve this. We need to get the metals down. Yeah. And so that's really what we should focus on. So when kind of everybody's looking at, well, what do you, what are the big recommendations? Okay. I can give you a couple of recommendations here. Like Doug, we talked about the sleep. Um, we can, we can do all of those things, but for the metals, we want to do things that we know we're going to lower those levels. So heavy metal detox, it's eight weeks long. We're going to do that. Uh, we're going to work on not just the metals that are uh, floating around in the body, the adipose tissue, but actually bind them up, remove them from the biofilms as well. Try to do sauna three to four days a week. How long? About 30 minutes if you can. Uh, those two things, like when I look at all the things you can do, because you can do a lot of things, those are like the two heavy hitters to get rid of. Yeah. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> if we, is, or is there certain things, I know ours aren't like crazy through the roof, but let's pretend they were really bad. Yes. What are some things that a client would feel by solving that, right? Is there, or feel or see or notice? Like, yeah, so what is they, aluminum? Because all of us had elevated aluminum what, what, what did that what would that cause nervous system and overall inflammation in the body oh. so then that can lead to this is why it's really important because all autoimmune issues or all cardiovascular issues or all brain issues have an underlying root cause they don't happen for no reason right like it's not just mm-hmm. like oh the body's aging and so these things happen no the body accumulates toxins mm-hmm. as you get older and it also, we'll call it reverse accumulates deficiencies. So you start to get lower in things like, let's say, chromium, right? And you start to increase then these metals just from being alive for 40 plus years. Mm-hmm. And so what we want to do is lower those because any inflammatory condition does what then? Well, it exacerbates your genetics. Yeah. And so for me, what did it exacerbate? Well, it exacerbated autoimmune mm-hmm. issue, rheumatoid arthritis when I was younger, mm-hmm. and then Addison's disease, type 2 diabetes. Uh, there was other things as well. I had really bad allergies. So when I got rid of my high levels of mercury and I got rid of my gut-based issues, didn't happen overnight, but over six months, I got rid of my autoimmune issues. Uh, and then I got rid of my blood sugar issues. And then I got rid of my awesome. Addison's as well. Oh, cool. awesome. And so what it is, is we can't tell you exactly how it's affecting you, but it's an inflammatory agent. And then the inflammation then goes after your weak spots, whether it's thyroid, joints, myelin sheath, brain, et cetera. Okay, cool. All right, oh, very cool. I'm right. excited to try this detox protocol just to see what the effects are. What do you typically see with somebody with that eight-week protocol of detox? How, like what kind of lowering do they see, notice in these heavy metals? We can get at least 50%. Minimum. Wow, yeah. that much? Yeah, at wow. least. Wow, that's insane. Yeah, okay. Some people are higher responders to it. And it also- Unless you're exposed every day, right? That's that right. Be, that's oh. the issue. But mm. now the nice That's really thing what is, we're teasing out by doing this, right? right? Like we know if we do yeah. this, if we do it and it clears 50 or more, good chances it was something that was with us for a long time. Yes. If it doesn't clear shit- The aluminum one is we know it's something factors, that we're, we're yeah, taking yeah. in every now day. Now you're right. seeing, you said across the board, because all of us had elevated aluminum. You're yes. seeing across the board or you're saying that you saw that you're seeing this across the board, elevated aluminum level starting to become kind of common? We see less than 10% of people with no aluminum. That's wow. how crazy it is. So this is one out of something environmental that yes. we're just all being affected by. 100%. Wow. Water, food, cosmetics. You know what you know what I read mm. that the the chemtrails have aluminum in them. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what I heard. Right, my yeah. bad. Not to get this episode yeah, blocked yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It was a joke. It, well, it already is from the vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It wasn't before it is now. Awesome. <laughs> this will have to be on a private, yeah, a private setting. Awesome. awesome. All right. So this is awesome. And so, now somebody could get anybody could get this test. They'll get the results, have somebody interpret it for them, and then then they'll get a protocol, know what to do, right? Yeah, the nice thing is they don't have to go to their doctors. Uh, we sign off on this. We ship it pretty much anywhere in the world. We can get it to people. This is an introductory lab that we actually offer for free, just shipping for the lab oh. to introduce people to functional medicine testing. Wow, excellent. Oh, oh, cool. Appreciate cool. that. All right. Yeah. Well, so thank you so much. Can I Dr. give the link where people can- Let's do it. I'll give it the link trouble. I'll give it now too. Yeah. Well, it's up to you, however you want to No, go for it now too. So it's stephencabral.com slash HTMA. And so- can I just say one thing? Because are we, the biggest thing we get against this is that people are skeptical. How are you giving away $199 lab for free? So we do it for first time lab clients to introduce them to what I found out after two years of going from doctor to doctor, 17 and 19, almost turning 20 years old, I found a doctor that ran this lab and the stress mood and metabolism test that actually we've run before as well. And that was completely game changing. And I want to state this, and I don't actually know that it's um, the right thing to do or not, but 
and I know this is going to sound a little odd. We've always given to charity for our businesses, like always since the beginning, mm-hmm. before we were making money, we would give, we gave to Boston strong and you never know where your money's going to. Yeah. Like you legitimately. That's true. So I said, we're going to give away, we can't give away a million labs. We're going to give away labs and that's what we're going to do. Like, I know, like, I know this makes a difference and I don't know if it's the best charitable choice or not. I think it's better that way. But yeah. this is something I can directly affect and help people with, or at least introduce them to. I love that. So this is, this is what we, we actually had a conversation about. We did. We, did. we just yeah. had a conversation. All of us do that uh, ourselves rather than giving to organizations. We do it to people we can see and touch and know yes. that we're helping. So exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Direct yeah. families and things yeah. like that. So awesome. anyway, appreciate you having me on again. And uh, this was a lot of fun. And I want to make sure people yeah. spell this right. Stephen Cabral. It's S T E P H. E N and then C A B R A L dot com forward slash H T M A. Yeah, it stands for hair tissue mineral analysis. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. All right, check it out. Thank you.